Hello, and welcome to Shampoo and Booze, a podcast about Airbnb and short-term rentals at shampooandbooze.com. We are Ryan and Ashley, sisters who run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week, we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. Send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to cover the topics that you care about. We are also available to give design and listing advice for your Airbnb or short-term rental. Check out our services page at notperf.com to book a time with us. Hello, welcome to episode 66. We are answering your questions. So if you have a question, you can always send it to us and we will either play it or read part of it and do our best to give you our thoughts and opinions. So we are listening to a voicemail from Tiffany about a place that she was going to stay. Hello, Ashley and Ryan. This is Tiffany from Indianapolis. Um, I have something I want to get your opinion on as far as um, Airbnbs go. So my son and I are traveling to Seattle next week, and we uh, are going the Airbnb route. And I received um, check-in instructions and general instructions for the property um, last week. And the email really um, turned me off as a customer and so I would love your opinion on um, what you ask your um, guests who are staying at your Airbnb to do prior to leaving. Um, The list of items that this place is asking us to do before we leave feels very, it was very um, off-putting. It was like you know, strip the bed linens, put them in a pile, start the laundry, take out the trash, um, uh, turn off all electronics. Um, there was just this whole big long list and the tone of the email is what really bothered me because I have stayed at Airbnbs before and they have asked us to do things, but I've never felt like I was like, like I was putting them out because we were staying there. And that's kind of the tone of this email. It was, here's a litany of things that you need to do. And you know, if you don't do it, you know, there are consequences. And it was, um, it just made me feel like I'm putting them out by staying in their property versus being a guest in their property. Again, I want to make it really clear. I don't mind doing things, you know, like taking care of a space. And, but this was just, it was just bullet lists. uh, And it's a very long list of things that we're supposed to do. And it just feels like, you know, we're not, really welcome and it's an inconvenience that people are staying there. So would love your opinion on those um, checkout details, what you ask your guests to do and how you frame the tone of those or is there a better way to do that? So yeah, I I guess I would ask if they were charging a cleaning fee. <laughs> that was my exact first thought. Because if they are, you're like, why are you making me clean your house? <laughs> Um, the other thing too, is like the things we ask them to, cause we have proper houses. Like we have pretty big, like three, like people stay for seven days and they have so much trash. I do ask them to take the trash out to the outdoor can so we can grab it. Um, and it helps the kitchen. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're like, we just left the trash in the kitchen, whatever. Fine. I'm not going to charge them for it. Um, it just helps for any like kitchen smells to like dissipate while my cleaners are cleaning. But yeah, so I asked them to put that stuff in the outdoor bins. And we used to have um, just hand wash dishes at our first rental, but we put a dishwasher in there. We have a dishwasher in all our other rentals. I asked them just to start the dishwasher um, because by the time my cleaner gets there and is done, she can put the dishes away. But I asked them not to strip the sheets because that's my cleaner's job and my job, like, just no, like that's what I charge a cleaning fee. I pay my cleaners to do that stuff. Yeah, I, I think it, it really, you know, we talked about this on a previous episode. Like there are some super old school places in Massachusetts that, you know, are like on Cape Cod and you basically have to like bring all of your linens and bed things. And so I feel like in those cases, you sort of know what you're signing up for. But I feel like if you're staying in somebody's apartment or their Airbnb house, you know, I think, and especially if a cleaning fee is being, um, charged, it's like, 
you know, maybe the maximum that you ask someone to do is like strip the beds and throw it in the laundry or something. But I also feel like maybe if there are exceptions to the situation, like your cleaner's out of town or you're not going to get to the apartment for like three or four days. Like it's one thing to be like, hey, I'm so sorry to inconvenience you. When you leave, can you make sure the trash is out and strip the beds? Like that kind of communication of a like, actually you are kind of asking a lot of your guests who could potentially be just staying at a hotel and not doing any of those things. I feel like if somebody's acting like you're inconveniencing them, I think one of a couple of things are probably happening. One is they're trying to nickel and dime the situation and that sucks. Like if you're like, actually that's a lot and you're charging a cleaning fee and I'm paying a lot to be there. Like that is a lot that you're asking me to do. The other potential for what's happening is they've gotten royally screwed. You know, maybe they've had guests that left their place a total disaster. And instead of figuring out systems for that to not happen, you know, they're basically assuming that every guest that they have is going to like trash their place. So I feel like people who hosts who have been burned or an Airbnb host has had a bad experience with with guests either leaving their place like completely disastrous or a mess or just not listening, you know, not reading properly and really feeling like people were trashing their place. And so, you know, if they feel like a guest has really um, trashed their place instead of having like a more decorous way of communicating to guests that, you know, you need to leave it in this shape, they often take a more aggressive route and don't come off as being a great host. So it's sort of unfortunate. I think you can ask people to do minimum things um, to keep... We even say in our listing, you know, we're like, this is our house. This is our space. We lovingly renovated this. So please treat it like, you know, your own home. Well, I don't know if that's a good idea because some people's homes are really messy. But like... You know, yeah, I think the people who've gotten burned before act like that. And you know what? You have every right to cancel that, too. I mean, if if you're like, you're asking for way too much, honestly, you can call Airbnb and be like, I want to cancel this and I don't want to get dinged for it. Um, If you're just like, they're asking for way too much. That's a really good point. And I feel like you have the root of canceling ahead of time, although... I think that we got this voicemail a few weeks ago. So curious about updates. How did it go? Um, But the other thing is if you decide to go and either don't have a great experience or are surprised by it, you can leave them a review however you decide is best to leave them a review. But you can also send them a private message and be like, hey, like that seemed like a lot and um, it wasn't great for us, you know? Or, hey, we actually had a really good time, but we were really off put by your first emails, you know? And like give them feedback because like we've said before, when we get feedback or messages about how something has come off or how, you know, what anything that happened in the house, it's really helpful for us. We don't always know. Yeah, I think that's fine. I, I would love for Tiffany to um, call back and tell us how it went. Did she stay there? Did she not? How did it go? Did you clean as much as you were supposed to? <laughs> did they charge you for not cleaning well enough? Ugh. Okay, so the next so the next question we got emailed from Jana in Missouri. Missouri. She says, I have two Airbnb units and these are my questions. Number one, my beds have sheets, a blanket, and a comforter. Do you wash the, uh, I love this question, do you wash the blanket and the comforter after every single visitor? Do you ever decide on a case-by-case basis? Okay, number one. When you're saying you have a blanket and a comforter, I'm thinking you have kind of like a throw blanket and then like a thicker comforter, but you're not saying you have a cover over your comforter, like a duvet cover, which is what we like rave about. I don't think you should have a random blanket because yeah, you better wash it every time. Um, People have sex on beds. Like... That's, what that's just how it goes. That's happening, and that's super gross for the next person if you're not washing it. 
And your comforter, yeah, you can't wash a comforter every time. Those things are big and bulky and thick. So that's why duvet covers. You wash the duvet cover every time. That's it. We've done a couple episodes about linens, about laundry, about, you know, using duvet covers and why we do that. Um, Essentially, if you cannot wash it every time, it shouldn't be how you're doing it. Um, So we will link to those. Right. And I also want to mention this is another random, like, pet peeve of mine. Uh, I don't know if you do this at your house, so don't don't be offended. But like, People will make the bed and you'll have like the pillows and then they'll put like all these extra like throw pillows on the bed to like make it all pretty and stuff. But guess what (laughs) my partner does immediately throws them on the floor. So (laughs) if you think about it, most people are like, well, I'm not going to sleep with these. I'm not going to put them on the luggage rack because I'm using that. I'm not going to put them on the chair because I'm using that too. Uh, I'm throwing them on the floor. So guess what your cleaner does or you do when you come and you clean the bed, beautiful bed. Everything that was on the floor is getting put back on the bed. Don't do it. Like Ashley said, yeah, if it can't get cleaned every single time, it should not be on the bed. Yeah, like I, if I'm going to do extra pillows, they're going to be pillows that people are sleeping with. Right. And if, and I put, I'll put even more extra pillows in the closet, you know, so it's like, there aren't like decorative pillows. They're all functional and everything gets washed. I have decorative pillows on chairs and couches and I ask my cleaners to make sure that if they have spots on them or anything, send them back to me and I will clean them. Um, Like, it's okay if they're not there for one renting. But yeah, like that stuff's gross. Um, So the other question that Jana had was, what do you do with condiments that are left behind the refrigerator? I stock some basics like mayonnaise and ketchup. Um, If someone leaves other condiments behind, should I throw those away? Neither of my units are a shared space. Okay, so she's got like, I'm assuming like a couple apartments that are just Airbnb apartments. Yeah. So again, we also stock like basic condiments. I have creamer. It's actually cream. It's like half and half. Um, And also ketchup, mayonnaise, relish, stuff like that. You can buy like a pack of it. Um, Butter. Uh, We keep that stuff. And if if, what we'll do is people will leave stuff behind like um, salad dressing, stuff like that. We'll leave it in there. But every once in a while we go through and we check to make sure it's not getting like crazy condiments, like sticky condiments, stuff that's like, you know, an eighth of a way full. Like we'll just we'll take it home and use it or we'll compost it and recycle the container like just as long as it's not looking messy. Like you don't want someone to open the fridge and see like all these packets of duck sauce from the takeout plate. Like, it's just like, if it starts to feel like a college dorm or like a bachelor pad, like just take that stuff home and use it or like throw it away. So Nikki wrote us um, and she was concurring with our opinion about um, using like makeup towels, black ones or gray ones and how they kind of like hide invisible stains. And we thought that was kind of like icky. And you had mentioned that you offer disposable makeup wipes for people. And her question was, are you concerned about a house with a septic system, someone using the makeup wipes and flushing them um, and it being a problem for the septic? Yeah, it's really funny that she wrote that. Cause she's like, yeah, I'm really surprised that you said that you gave disposable makeup wipes to people because you have a septic system. Like, both houses have a septic. And I was like, oh my god, she's right. <laughs> I ha- honestly hadn't thought of that before. Um, I have seen the trash. I've seen uh, our bathroom trash has like clear trash bags. So when the renter or when my cleaners come and bring the trash to our house, we have like these big bins. We have to bring them to the transfer station. People throw those wipes away. I mean, they're pretty good about not flushing them. It's like they use them on their face. They put them in the thing. Uh, The other thing too is um, we get our septic pump pretty often. Like I know a bunch of septic dudes that live near us and they're like, you don't have to pump it for 20 years. You know, it's fine. It should just work, you know, and that's true. But since we have like heavy usage and also like 
I get nervous that it's going to get stopped up. We just get it pumped every couple of years. I mean, some people pump it every year, but we have pretty big septic tanks, so it's okay. But I had my pump, mine pumped last year just because I'm paranoid. It's 200 bucks. Um, just get it pumped. So I've never had a problem. They pumped it and they were like, yeah, this looks fine. I mean, there's some little plastic doodads in there. Like people flushed little, you know, little kids flush things sometimes, but we've never had a problem. So I'm pretty okay with that. And it's, and we also have washcloths too. So I definitely get stained washcloths. That's for sure. And like she said, you know, I'd rather throw away a hundred washcloths before I come pay a plumber. We've honestly never had a problem, but you know, I do get dirty washcloths sometimes too. So we got this great email from Robin, uh, just giving us a tip after our cleaning episode. Um, there is a great, uh, columnist called ask a clean person and there's lots of good cleaning tips and we started checking it out and I totally got hooked immediately it's like a really, really good set of advice around cleaning certain things, getting rid of certain kinds of stains, you know, how to think about dirt and mold and wine stains. And it's really great. It's like a, an awesome resource. So we will link to that. It's on Esquire.com. Ask a clean person. So thank you, Robin. Okay. And our next question and comment was from Andrew. Um, and Andrew says, I agree 100% about using a mild scented detergent. I've been hosting for four years now and have targeted mainly travel nurses, interns, and business travelers needing a one to six month stay in our Airbnbs. Okay, that's super interesting. Um, guests are much more likely to need to use the laundry while they're staying with us. And we have found the little pods from Costco, the Kirkland brand, have been the best. Um, and it controls the amount they use and is very mildly scented. So I love to hear that. I agree. Perfumey scented detergents are horrifying. Um, some people are super sensitive to it. So you might as well just use a mild scent for everyone uh, when you're doing your linens or like providing detergent for people as well. He also asked, have you ever gotten a bad feeling about a guest based on their first message? Um, and decided to say no. Uh, what questions do you require the guest to answer before arrival? My big one is why are they visiting Dayton, Ohio? So he's in Dayton, Ohio. It's not a big tourism city. And confirmed, confirming that they booked the correct amount as we charge for an additional guest. So he's saying that, um, you know, if someone's like, there are two guests uh, and there's actually four I guess he charges for extra guests, but um, that's a good question to ask people. Uh, the only time we ever sort of decline people is, and we just had to do this last week, is when people are asking to do a wedding on our property or do a rehearsal dinner with like 50 people because they don't want to pay for a venue. They want to stay there over the weekend and they want to pay the price for a weekend and they also want to have their wedding there basically for free. And we say no. We just decline and we're like, nope, there's some really great venues for rehearsal dinners and for weddings. And we'd love to have you stay during your wedding weekend. But we won't host the wedding at our house. So that's when we've declined people. I've only declined one person based on a bad feeling. And it was when I had first started... Um, I was living alone at the time and the person had just gotten on Airbnb. They didn't have any reviews. It, I think it was a time when like a government issue ID wasn't required yet, or I had, didn't have that turned on as a requirement. And there was just something that felt like weird about his communication. Um, and I just said, Sorry, I actually, uh, I put those dates up by accident. And that was just, that was the only time that I just had a weird feeling. And I was like, you know what, I'm new to this. Um, I don't know enough about what I should be looking for, or worried about. And this just like feels funny to me. And he's not going to have a hard time finding another place. You know, it wasn't like... 
you know, I turned down some like family reunion situation. So that's the only time I've had a bad, just had a bad feeling and just decided not to stress about it too much. Um, and now I feel like I just know much more about what to look for, what to, what could be problematic. Honestly, I feel like the biggest issues I've had are just bad communicators. Um, I say in my listing, like, how are you getting here and what's your estimated time of arrival? Because if someone's coming on the train from the airport, you know, from some international flight, I have a sense that their arrival is going to be different than someone who's driving from a town over, you know, and so I can anticipate a bigger window of arrival for someone coming internationally than someone who's like actually kind of local or like their parents are staying with me, you know. And so if they don't answer those questions, Often I'm like, okay, they're like clearly not going to communicate very well, which means that I have to be more proactive getting that information from them. Um, A lot of people book and then just like will ignore it, especially if it's months in advance. And that's usually not that big of a deal. But if they just book a few days before and they're not being very communicative, it's one of those signals where, you know, it just means you have to be more proactive with getting that information. Yeah, something we do, it's similar where um, we wait for them. We message them like a couple days before they're coming. Everyone, even if we've heard from them. Um, And we basically are like, hey, we're looking forward to you coming and we'll give you the door code. Just let us know when you're coming. Like we don't give them the door code yet. They have to like, we're like, you need to communicate with us again because we need to like make sure that you're like an actual real person that's coming. And then once they're like, Hey, we're looking forward to it. We're coming in at 3 PM and we're, you know, whatever. Um, then we give them the door code. Cause we need a little bit of communication. Like these people, uh, they were coming from England today and we had messaged them when they first booked. And then we messaged them like two days ago and they never responded and we didn't give them the door code. And we're like, you know, we need to hear from you. Jay texted her phone. It was an international phone. Sometimes we call people. Actually, often we do call people and we're like, hey, we're just making sure like everything's good. And they're like, oh, sorry, I've been so busy, you know. Um, But these people actually messaged us today and they're like, we tried to message you, but we don't think it went through the app. And they're fine. They have the door code. Actually, Airbnb gives you the door, gives people the door code ahead of time, but people ignore that message. Like if you do have a door code, you should put it into your Airbnb listing so that when they get their like itinerary information, it's in there. But people ignore it. I mean, they ignore it all the time. They're like, what's the address? What's the Wi-Fi? We, and we're like, that was in the message, but I'll tell you again. That's fine. <laughs> So the last thing we wanted to do in this episode was just say that one of our listeners got her place finished and renovated up in Maine, and uh, it's Sherry's place. I'm going to link to it on the blog. She said that we could. It's kind of a great listing, her title. Let's show off her title a little bit. Newly renovated waterfront Cedarside Cottage. She has gorgeous photos. She has a gorgeous place. You guys should all go stay there and book her place. She she obviously got bookings right away. So I might feature one of her photos as our still image because it's gorgeous. And congratulations. This is like a huge accomplishment. I've been there this week, too. We just put up a new listing and now you can have a nap. Yay, Sherry. We're so excited for you. We can't wait to stay at your place. <laughs> we're so excited. And your place looks freaking gorgeous your photos look gorgeous like they're good job they're light and bright and modern and you're on the water good job thanks for listening to shampoo and booze at shampooandbooze.com as usual send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we'll do our best to cover the topics you care about don't forget about our design and listing advice services head over to our services page at notperf.com to book your design advice session bye bye